We're going to study the Word of God. We're talking about spiritual warfare. And so what does all that mean? Before we get into spiritual warfare, let me just tell you a little bit of a story. Go ahead. Okay, see? It's, a, it's automatic response. Oh, okay, there's a baby elephant, okay? Well, I heard of a gentleman that saw an adult elephant that was tied to a stake. And he couldn't understand why this elephant, why that little flimsy stake would hold him. And the circus gentleman said, well, what happens is when they're, whoops, when they're a baby, what happens is we put the, the, the chain around its leg and it can't pull away. And so as it tries over, and of course we know elephants don't. Don't forget, like my wife, they don't forget. So I'm just kidding. My wife has a great memory. So anyhow, so what happens is you, uh, elephants don't forget. So what happens is this elephant would try to pull itself away and it just came to the conclusion, this thing's too strong for me. And finally, when the elephant became full grown, it lived, it was inhibited by what the elephant believed. You see, maybe some of us today are limiting what God can do through your life based upon what you believe. You see, what you think about is so essential. It's the command center of your life and what you think about. And so often we limit what God can do through us based upon what we think about ourselves or other people. And God wants to set us free. We don't limit ourselves by what we believe. You see, the Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so he is. It's so important to think rightly about your, the two most important things that you can think about at any given time that will control your life is these two things. Are you ready? The first thing is what you think about God. And the second one is what you think about yourself. Those two thoughts and how you process will affect your entire life. And so today we're going to talk about how to win the battle in your mind, because we are in a fight in what you and I think. Hitler, one of the wickedest men that ever faced on a planet, said this, if you, tell a big, if you tell a big enough lie and tell it frequently enough, it will be believed. And that's what happens. There's a lot of misinformation in our lives. Misinformation how you grew up, what people say it about you, right? And there's misinformation in our culture today as well. It's hard to, you have to verify what you hear, right? It's hard to believe anything anymore. On, on all sides of the spectrum, no matter what you believe, no matter what industry you're involved with, people believe crazy things. I remember my parents a number of years ago sent me this article that said, AB, it said ABC World News. It wasn't ABC News, but it had the same fonts and it said something that was horrific about our president that I didn't believe. It said, there's no way that our president would do that. And I looked it up, and sure enough, it was a lie. You see? And there are false information out there. And so what, if we're not careful, we can start believing a lie. And the enemy is called, by the way, a liar. And we are in a spiritual battle. And the Bible says this. This is what Jesus says. And you will know the truth... And the truth will set you free. You see, the truth is not just an idea. The truth is a person. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. He's not information. He is truth. And so we believe all truth is God's truth. We're not afraid of truth. In fact, if you're here this morning and you're like, I don't know if I believe in all this stuff. That's fine. You're welcome here. We're not afraid of it. Ask all the questions you want because I believe God is God. And he can handle any inquiry. It, the Bible says this. If you seek with me, seek for me with all your heart, you will find me. If you seek after God to make an excuse, you're not going to find him. And so you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. If the truth sets you free, then what will make you in bondage? Lies. And so the enemy is called the father of lies. And it's very interesting. I just want to encourage you guys be, to be aware don't just drink the Kool-Aid of the culture that it gives you today. In fact, I was just reading this the other day, and I did some a little search. You know, Google is messed up. There's misinformation in Google. You do a search. I'm going to, listen, please understand what I'm ready to say. Okay, we love all people. Okay, but if this is, I did a test on us, and it's true. If, I hope they fixed it by now. But if you go to Google, and you write straight family, straight family, 
a straight couple, whatever, and it comes up, the pictures, it will show alternative lifestyles within that. If you put white family, but please understand me, everybody, I'm married to a Latino, okay? And I love all ethnicities. But if you put white family, what happens is it comes up with multicultural, which is fine. But if you put black family, it comes up. So what's happening is, Sometimes the search engines, now listen, we want all people are valuable, but there are differences. God gave variety, right? And we love variety, a mosaic of people. We're better together than we are by ourselves. But because there's an agenda out there that people put in the program, the AI takes over, and now the AI is doing things that the programmers had no idea. They actually put in this new creative image thing, they put, they put down Vikings, and it was an African-American. Vikings look like me, red beard. Right? George Washington. So it got it wrong. And I don't think these people even realized it. Why? They put wrong information in there. You're hearing wrong information about different people. You hear wrong information about candidates. Wrong information about what's going on in our weather patterns and everything like that. You have to verify. Don't be gullible. Seek the truth. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Listen, I'm not afraid. You should not be afraid. Please don't believe everything. Don't even believe what I say. What? Yeah. The Bible says when the apostle Paul spoke, he said the Bereans are better than the rest because when I spoke the word of God, the Bereans made sure what I was saying was true. In fact, in the last service, a gentleman came up to me and says, Pastor, I don't understand. You said that the days are evil. I thought the Bible says today is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice, and I will be glad in it. See, that's true. But Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, 34, that seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Sufficient is the day's evil. I said, what I meant to say, I, hope I didn't do a good job enough, is that every day is going to have evil in it but we stand with God. So you're welcome to ask questions. Anyone who cannot, no one that, listen, if you can't challenge somebody, they're probably not worth talking to. We're okay with being challenged. Does that make sense? If you're looking for a scapegoat and you're looking for a problem, that's one thing. But if you really want to search God, you will find him because God is truth. Even Richard Dawkins, the atheist, Richard Dawkins, I don't, I'm not a big fan of him. He's even saying that people are denying science now. They're denying science. And he was talking about what's going on with the reassignment, re, uh, reassignment surgeries and stuff like that. He said, is it crazy? It goes against, and this is an eighth. I never thought I would be agreeing with Richard Dawkins. Because what's happened is we're believing a lie. Now, we can get angry at everybody, but the problem is you're going to be shadow boxing. You see, the visible war is won invisibly. Let me say it again. The visible war is won invisibly, invisibly, including in your life. How you think invisibly, no one sees, will eventually determine what you do with your hands. What you think goes to your heart, goes to your hands. So what happens invisibly will become visible. That's why we got to make sure what we're believing, what we're eating upon, what we're thinking about, that it is correct and that it is truth. And we believe in truth. You see, the truth is not, is not an opinion. Truth is truth. All right? So, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The, the Emancipation Proclamation happened on January 1st, 1863, where Abraham Lincoln signed it into law. So now slavery was, a, was abolished. Praise God. But even though that was signed, it took years for people to even know they were free. Some people didn't even know about the Emancipation Proclamation. In fact, our culture, even had the remnants of this, was in our culture. And we thank God for people like Martin Luther King Jr., who said the following, we do not judge a man or woman on the content of the color of their skin, but the character of what's inside of them. I'm paraphrasing. And so what's happened today is we're changing that. Now it's about change the outside to change the inside. No, it's about the inside that changes the outside. And so we've made great strides, but it took a long time to get that out of our culture, a slavery mentality. Even the Israelites were in slavery for 430 years and Moses got them out of Egypt, but Egypt was still in the people. Send us back to Egypt. And he had to eradicate that slavery mentality. So you want to change your life? 
change the way you think. I want to change my life, change the way I think. And so here's one of the movies. Don't look at it. It's a bad, it's very bloody, by the way, but it's a good movie. Anyhow, uh, spiritual warfare. We are in a battle. And we've been talking about the last week we talked about the shield of faith, and we are going together. We are called to fight together. Last week we talked about the shield of faith and the kind of shield the Apostle Paul talked about are shields that line up together, interlock together, become a walking wall. And God wants us to be connected to Him and each other. And so can we, we'll give you a little bit of a background, what we talked about. Are you guys ready to go through the scriptures for a few moments? This is the context in which we're based this whole passage upon is the following. The apostle Paul is writing while he's incarcerated, while he's chained to a Roman guard. Here, this is what he has to say on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We believe a scripture it says this. Finally, be strong in the Lord, not yourself, and in the strength of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you and may be able to stand against the schemes, the devices of the devil. Now there is a devil out there. Please understand that God is stronger than the devil. There's not a yin and a yang. He's a defeated foe. And the way he gets power is by lying how strong he is. You see, God is stronger. He's a defeated foe. He's only at one place at one time. I don't have time. You can go back and look at the series on cornerstonetreasure.com or Spotify or iTunes, and you can catch up to what we're talking about. But he's not stronger than the enemy, okay? And the battlefield is the world, your flesh, and the spirit. That's what happens. So we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces and evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up what? Take up means it's a command. Take up the whole armor, like a Roman, or like a Roman soldier. The whole armor of God that you may be able, you are able to withstand. You can do it in the evil day. And having done all to stand firm, Stand. Sometimes the best thing you can do, I am going to stand for what is right. I am not going to back down. I'm going to stand. Stand, therefore, having fastened the belt of truth. All right? And remember, everybody, we talked about the belt of truth. What's the belt of truth? Belt of truth was a central part of the armament. And there is truth. There's absolute truth. Truth is not subjective. It's objective. There's no such thing. I hear it all the time. My truth. You don't have your truth. You have your opinion. And you're welcome to your opinion. But don't call your opinion truth. You don't determine what's truth. Truth is something you don't determine. Truth is set up ahead of time. You can't do that in mathematics. You can't do that in science. Hello. Right? So there's truth. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Stand there for having armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all the stand, stand firm, stand therefore, having fastened the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, the right type of living of righteousness, and as the shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, that was last week, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take, that's today, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end, keep alert with perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. So we're to work together, we're to pray. So today we're talking about the helmet of salvation. Now, just to quickly review what we talked about, we just went through the armament and the central piece of the armament is the truth. If you don't have truth, nothing else lines up. The breastplate of righteousness would be connected to the belt of truth. The sword would be there. Everything was, this is a central uh, piece of the armament. You wear it at all times, including the breastplate of righteousness. You wear it at all times. Gospel of peace, wear it at all times. You put your feet in the ground, you stand, you can advance. Very important to have good grip, all right? And today, it's the helmet of salvation. I just happen to have a helmet. And let me just tell you what happened. I ordered the first helmet. It looked really good online. And you could put it on a squirrel's head. <laughs> it's it ridiculous. I said, honey, what's this? She said, well, honey, you got to read the whole, exp you have to read the whole thing. You don't just look at the pictures. And so she ordered me this. It came yesterday. I'm not going to put it on. Okay, I'll put it on. 
So here you have, it's, it's actually, it's not bronze, it's plastic, but it's bronze. And what would happen, the military commanders, they would have various horse hair and they would color different colors. And this is how you knew who your leaders were. Okay, and so they would have different types of helmets and, and they even had a visor, for example. So when the sun was coming at you, they put like almost when you're driving on Interstate 84 at night, when the sun's coming down, you put your visor down so you can deal with it. The enemy will throw you a bunch of distractions to blind you, but you gotta put your visor down from your helmet, focus on the truth, keep your eyes where you need to go, not under distractions. And so it's very important, we know what happens in, in sports and how important it is to wear, if you ride a motorcycle, please wear a helmet. Because if you fall, you can have a concussion, you can have all kinds of corneal damage and cerebral problems. And even we're finding out now, uh, because of a sports, like Joe Namath, the football player from the 60s, he had so many uh, concussions that he's having neurological problems today. And it's so important to cover your head with protection. Because as it goes in the mind, so it goes in the rest of your body. As it goes in your spiritual mind, so it goes in the rest. What you believe will affect everything else that you do in life. And this is some of the archaeological digs. Some of them were very ornate and decorative. And some, they started off with, with uh, leather, and then they put bronze over it, and they would make them very ornate and very beautiful. And so you can see the commander would have something like that. And it looked nice. Okay, and this is what they would wear, these different helmets together. And this was me last summer, <laughs> before I started eating those donuts that we serve after the service. You guys don't believe me. Okay. All right. The helmet. What did the helmet do? The helmet provided identity. Okay. I knew that I was part of the, I was part, of, you're part by the helmet. You receive the helmet of salvation. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, God gives you the helmet of salvation, which we're going to explain a little bit more later on. So what is the helmet? It identifies you. You're marked by the helmet. Not only does the helmet mark you through identification, but it also gives you, provides you identity and safety. So when they take a, a hammer, which they would do, a battle axe, and they would whack it on your head, you'd be protected. Without this, you'd be in serious problems. So let me explain to you what happens. It's, it's the helmet, which is protection. Now salvation. What is salvation? Well, a lot of people say, well, I'm already saved, so I'm good to go. So, salvation, so so, means to be saved, delivered, and it's not just a one time event. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, and basically what happens is you admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. You have a debt you cannot pay, but Jesus paid for, paid for your debt. If you will confess your sins to Him, believe He's the Son of God, and hand over your life to your Creator, who knows how to run your life a lot better. Just like your children, when they're four years old, think they know what they're doing. They have no idea what they're doing, but as a parent, you do. So God knows how to run your life better than you do, and He loves you even more than you could even imagine. And when you surrender to your Creator in love, He's going to bless you. So what happens in salvation is you believe in Jesus, you get the helmet on. That's your helmet of salvation. Now, when you give your life to Christ, can you hang on just for a few seconds when I get a little theological? Is that okay? All right? The, the terminology used when you give yourself to Christ, it's called sanctification. I'm sorry. It's called justification. Justification is just as I've never sinned. When you give your life to Christ, Christ pays for all your sins. You're saved. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. No angels, no demons, no any creative thing would separate us from the love of God. You are secure. You're in the middle of his hand. So you got, you got, basically, you're justified. Now you're living life. Now I'm becoming sanctified. Sanctified means I'm becoming freer in Jesus Christ. I'm saved. Are you tracking with me? This is a little hard. I'm saved by God's grace. What is God's grace? It's his ability. Everything that I need for godliness has been provided by Jesus Christ. Now I have to access that account of grace through faith. Faith is believing what God says and stepping out and putting it into action. So sanctification is taking the, the faith you believe, taking the, the grace that you is available to you, and you do it and believe, and you start having good works. That's sanctification. Okay, so you have justification, sanctification, and finally there's glorification. Glorification is one day we're with God. No more pain, no more difficulty. Now we are glorified. So salvation is both provided during and forevermore. Okay, you follow me, everybody? I, hope you, I know it's a little hard. I should have wrote those down for you to help you out. Okay, so in Isaiah 59, 17, it says this. He, that's God, put on righteousness, breastplate, and a helmet of salvation on his head. 
In the Thessalonians, it says this, but since we belong to the day, in other words, you're part of the light of Christ, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet of the hope of salvation. You see, what protects me often is the hope of salvation. You see, I, I, I've been through this already and, and I've, I've talked about this already, but my sons, my older son, Luke, is not here, I'll talk about him. Uh, he would make an excuse that I have to watch the Yankee game because uh, I said, record it and watch it tomorrow. It's not the same, Dad. Someone's gonna tell me in school and ruin it for me. I gotta watch it now. No, you're going to bed right now. <laughs> okay, this is like last week. No, I'm just kidding. No, that was a number of years ago. A number of years ago. And so why? Because if you go to school, someone tells you what happened, it's not fun to watch the game anymore because you know it's gonna happen. When you understand that Jesus defeated the enemy and that one day you'll be with him in heaven, it takes the sting out of everything. It still hurts. So as the apostle Paul says, I'm struck down but not destroyed. That's why in what I've been going through lately, with the loss of my mother on earth, I have an eternal hope, though I'm crying, though I'm going through a hard time. Just the other day, I was discussing Easter with John and I just started, out of nowhere, I started to cry. I'm like, what's going on with me? Because I'm mourning my mother, but I have joy because I know she's in heaven. And I told her the best days are ahead in Christ Jesus. So when you're going through a hard time, it's like we have our, our dear friend, Alan Marie, that just had their baby this morning. Vito, what a name. 4.15 a.m. She was in a lot of pain, but she had the hope of the birth of her son and now her son is here. Amen. You push through the pain, right? And so that's the hope. And you put the helmet of salvation on. I'm going through it. I'm getting clobbered. But I know my Redeemer lives. And one day I'll see him. And the best is yet to come. I've heard people say, well, the problem with you Christians, you're so heavenly minded. You're no of earthly good. And I would agree with you. That statement would be true if you're so religiously minded and scapegoat everything that you don't deal with life. I agree with that. But the most consequential people in history were so heavenly minded, they were of earthly good. Does that make sense? Okay, so you see beyond this. So I'm more powerful. I'm fearless. I'm not afraid to die. I know my Redeemer lives. I know he's powerful. So put on the helmet of the hope of salvation. Now, how many of you like ba football? No, not baseball, football. How many were happy with the Kansas City Chiefs? How many were not happy with the Kansas City Chiefs? Well, I used to live in Kansas City, so I, I kind of, I, they're kind of a small market, so I kind of rooted for them. How many love Taylor, Taylor Swift? Okay, I just thought I'd mention that. It had nothing to do with the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, I just had to say that just to make the, my daughter happy. Okay, who's not happy with that? Okay, so anyhow, ever hear of the offense, offense coordinator? A guy by the name of Eric. And so what happens is he's up there on the stands. Meanwhile, you have Patrick Mahone who puts his helmet on. And from what I understand, they have a transmitter in his helmet. So he puts the helmet on and because he's part of the Chiefs, he can hear the offense commander, offense uh, co coordinator saying, hey, this is what you need to do. This is what I see going on. But do this, then the other. He gave him commands, gives him, gives him, tells him what to do because he sees what's above and the guy on the ground does not see what's going on. So listen, everybody, when you give your life to Jesus Christ and you put the helmet of salvation on, the Holy Spirit will speak to you when you put your helmet on through prayer, through reading the word of God. Now, how do you understand that? Well, the Bible says, my sheep know my voice. So how do you tune into the frequency of heaven? You tune into the frequency of heaven by sharpening your spirit. How do I sharpen my spirit? By reading the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. Just this morning, I was reading the Bible. And as I was reading through the Bible in a year, I, I, was, I was amazed that I, God was speaking to me to the sacrifices this morning. And it was very interesting. It said this morning when I was reading it, it talked about that when you kill an animal in the field for sport, you cannot give that to the Lord. And when you deal with an animal, if you kill an animal, you should treat it with respect and, and bury the blood underneath the ground. So what did that tell me this morning? What does that have to do with anything? Well, I just want to give you an example. As I read those scriptures today, when I give a sacrifice to God, it's got to be a true sacrifice. Okay? I don't just do it, oh, here, God. I give God my best. The second thing is, we should take care of creation. We should take care of animals. 
Cats and dogs matter. Even cats matter. Mice, they don't matter. Rats, they don't matter. Gerbils. You, you follow me? So I just read the Bible this morning. So it spoke to me, right? I heard a guy, and in fact, the Lord saying, hey, what kind of sacrifice? Are you just giving me the half? Or you give me the full sacrifice. So what happens is when I read the word of God, I hear the Holy Spirit speak to me. The more often I hear the Holy Spirit, the more often I hear your voice. For example, I got Joe Scaramuza's over there. If he calls me up, well, now we have caller ID. But let's suppose it was an unknown caller. I picked it up. I, oh, hey, hey, Pastor. Oh, hey, Joe. I know his voice. Why? Because we spent time together, right? We shared salt together. We shared food together. Okay, salt, that's an old saying. Never mind. So because I know his voice. I know my wife's voice. Because I spend time with her. So when you spend time in God's voice, you can begin to hear the coordinator in your mind. And you know what's of God and what's not of God. Do you follow me? So this is the importance of having the offensive coordinator. And that's why you need to wear your helmet. Make sure it works. You see, for the weapons of our warfare are not for, of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds, we destroy, what the words destroy means in, in Greek? Annihilate, blow up, pulverize. I mean, don't even play around with it. And this is the New Testament. <laughs> we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take, now notice, it's not saying that we go to town hall and, and yell at people. I'm not saying that. This is talking about the internal dialogue inside your head. Okay, so we got to do battle here before we do battle out there. So what happens? We destroy arguments. You're not going to be able to make it. You can't do it. You know what happened in the fourth grade. You know what happened in the fourth grade. I want to tell a story that I heard from uh, Bill Hormsby, which was a, a great man of God. Uh, when he was in school one day, he was doing math, math problems. He was so bright mathematically that he could see a problem on the board and solve it immediately. But the teacher wanted him to go to the board and show his work. But he was kind of a cocky kid. So he got up there and went, bur, 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 bur. and she goes, uh, that's wrong. You should show your work. I don't need to. Billy, you'll never amount to anything. You were, basically, you're a loser. Something like that, she said to him. And for some reason or another, the woman who said something out of anger, it got into his heart. And it got from his mind to his heart to his psyche. And for some reason or another, he began to believe that lie that he'd never amount to anything. He kind of just barely got through school, became a drinker and did drugs a little bit, became a great musician, tried, did worse in clubs and all that. And then one day he got a girl pregnant and he needed to get a job, a real job. So he went to Exxon, one of the, one of the oil companies out in Louisiana. And when he went there, he gave him an entrance exam to see what he would do for the oil company. And he took the test. The guy got the test back and said, Billy, I need to see you. And they go, oh, great, I'm not gonna get the job. He gets there, the guy says this. We've been doing this for many years. We've never seen anyone score as high as you did in your aptitude. Billy, you're gonna do great things. The curse that the woman said, they didn't realize it, he heard the truth and his life turned around. He became a great church planter. He became a great man. And his daughter, his daughter ended up marrying the, 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 one of the top pastors in the world because of this guy, because he heard the truth. So I want to encourage you. We want to destroy arguments that are lies. Maybe you're thinking there's nothing else I can do. Just the way I am. This is the way I am. You, are, you cannot control yourself. I haven't even heard this by their way. Well, those people that have a murder, they have a criminal gene in them. They can't help themselves. So we shouldn't punish them. We shouldn't incarcerate them because they have a criminal gene. It's in their G DNA. Now, it may be true, you, have a, uh, you may have a, a bent in that direction. Maybe there's a, some problems like that. But what we've done is we've blamed everything that you are a victim of circumstances. You know what the Bible says? Whoever's in Christ is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. Do you realize, I really like the 12-step program. It's very, very good because the only way you can get healed is you have to take ownership of your problems. Once you take ownership of your problems, you can give them away. You can't give away your problem if you don't own it. Does that make sense? If I don't own something, I can't give it away. So you own it. So for example, I'll say, my name is Eric and I'm an alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. I'll put that on the internet. I'm an alcoholic. So I'll go to AA, right? And so I'll go there. I'm, at, I'm at 30 years now. I've been clean. I've been dry for 30 years. My name is Eric and I'm an alcoholic. I've been clean for 30 years. Now, as good as that is, it's actually wrong biblically. What I should be saying is this. 
I'm a child of God. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I used to be an alcoholic, but now I am free. I'm a child of God. I am not controlled by alcohol. I'm controlled by the Spirit of God. You see, and so what you want to do is tell yourself the truth. Because one of the things that in the Greek it says about the helmet, when we look at the Greek word for helmet, it means wrapped around your head. And the word used in the Greek says road. A road that's wrapped around your head that protects you. Do you realize every time you think a thought, you make a road? You think back to that Bill, Bill Hornsby, when he thought about to happen in his grade school, he had a road. I'm a loser, I'm a loser, I'm a loser. I never make out to anything. And he had a big, big highway in his life. But when he learned the truth, what did he do? He, he replaced the lie with truth. And what did he do? He planted grass seed where those lies were and put truth there. And now he believes things about himself. Just because you went through a divorce, just because you struggled with something, just because last night you blew it, does not mean that God can't work through you. Your sin does not define you. Your Savior defines you. Your behavior does not define you. Your Savior defines you. Now, listen, everybody, we mentioned last week, this is so important. I, the Bible says you're under no obligation to obey your lustly flesh. You don't have to do what your body tells you to do. You are not an animal. You are made in the image of God. In fact, the Bible says, I mentioned it last week, I'll say it again, no temptation is overtaking you, but what is common to man. And God is faithful. We're not allowed to be tempted more than you're able. But with every temptation, will provide you an avenue of escape that you could be stand unto it. Therefore, thank you, God, that I have the power not to blow my top. I'm Italian. I like to blow my top. Okay. No excuse. At least I'm not Irish. <laughs> Probably am a little bit, actually. Actually, I am a little bit Irish, by the way. Um, knowledge of God and take every thought captive. In a, can, can you guys relax a little bit? Can we have a little fun? Okay. Oof. Going to have the Irish people outside marching with bagpipes. Well, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Knowing the gods of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. I don't know where this came from. I tried to find the origin of it, but whatever it is, it's true. Here it is. All truth is God's truth. Thoughts become feelings. You think something long enough, it becomes a feeling. It becomes a feeling. Thoughts become feelings. Feelings become actions. Actions become habits. Habits become character. And character becomes destiny. The enemy understands that. You're not going to imagine. You're not going to. This is what you are. You don't even know who you are. I don't know who I am. I don't know who I am. I don't know who I am. I start believing it. All of a sudden, I start believing it, and the feelings come in. You see how that works? That's so why we should speak the truth in love to each other. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, dunamis, explosive power, and of agape, love, and of a what? God has not given me a spirit of fear, but you're fearing. I know I'm fearing right now, but God has not given it to me. I don't want it. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but what? But of power, love, and a sound mind. Now, what's so interesting about this passage, I just found this out this past week in studying. When the apostle Paul wrote this, he's writing to his protege, Timothy. According to what we can ascertain through history, we found that Timothy was a pastor of a church, oversaw about 25,000 people in the area of Ephesus. Now, when persecution began, the real church, kind of, uh, the real church, the fake church ran away and he was left with a hundred people. More than likely, Timothy felt like a, a failure. I lost the whole thing. And what does Paul say by the power and inspiration of the Holy Spirit? God has not given us a spirit of fear. Peace, love, and a sound mind. A sound mind is your inheritance in Christ Jesus. If you're on medication, take the medication for high blood pressure, but you have less Twinkies. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> if you're on medication for your anxiety and all that kind of stuff, okay, that's fine. Don't fill yourself with negative things. Start thinking positive things and still take the medication. Does that make sense? Okay. So, and do not be conformed to this world as the worship team makes their way up. It doesn't say that in the scripture, does it? How did Jesus work out? How did Jesus do his ministry without keyboards? Anyhow, <laughs> you have to have someone playing quietly or you can't end anything. And do not be conformed to this world, but what? 
Be transformed. The word transform is metamorphosis. The same word we use when a caterpillar becomes a, goes into a chrysalis and becomes a butterfly. How, you, how do you transform your life? Remember, what happens invisible, change happens invisible become, before it becomes visible. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? Instead of trying to stop and do the wrong thing, start doing the right thing. Start making new pathways. Put the helmet of salvation and think the right thoughts. Wrap it around your head and protect it. In Jesus' name, I thank you, God. I put my helmet on. I'm going to get through this cancer. I'm going to get through this situation. I know they're, they're, they're laying people off. I know my wife left me. I know my children are running away. I don't know what school I'm going to go to. I don't have enough money. I don't know what's going to happen in my relationship. My, my date left me. I have no one now. I'm all by myself. What am I going to do? I'm going to put my helmet on that God is with me. He'll never leave me or forsake me. And he'll lead me into all truth. You put the helmet on. And you believe what you're, whoops. And sometimes you got to shake it, baby. This is called pride. God will get rid of your pride and you'll be. <laughs> Don't do this at home. Leave it to the professionals. Just kidding. All right. <laughs> Renewing your mind that you may prove what is good and what is acceptable and perfect will of God. We are transformed by the renewing of your mind. Whatever you focus upon, whatever you think about, you will become. What are you focusing on? Are you focusing on truth or lies? The enemy is a liar. Don't believe the lies. Let God be true and every other man be a liar. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I am not, I am a new creation. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Shall we pray? Father, thank you so much for this opportunity, Lord, to hear about your word today. Father, I've done my best at this moment to try to convey the importance of wearing our helmet of salvation. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to repent for thinking wrong thoughts, for letting the enemy speak lies to us. Lord, we've listened to lies. We've entertained lies. And today we say no to lies. Jesus, you are the way. We do your way. You are the truth. We listen to your truth. And you are the life. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you'd break off that someone's, someone's thinking I'm ugly. No one's ever going to want me. In Jesus' name, that's a lie. You are beautiful. You're made in God's image. And God loves you and you're valuable in Jesus' name. Someone else is thinking, I can never get rid of this addiction. Yes, you can through Christ Jesus. Your sin does not define you. Your Savior does in Jesus' name. And yes, that marriage can be saved in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that nothing's too difficult for you. I ask right now that you touch every single person. Lord, we want to put our helmet on. We want to be transformed we want to hear the offensive coach. We want to hear the Holy Spirit speaking to us in our helmet of salvation, giving us ideas and understanding in Jesus' name.